Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Kwentong GK. This is your weekly show, weekly conversations with um, people who are supporting Gawad Kalinga USA and our work for the poor. I'm your host, Donna Reyes, and tonight is another exciting evening. I have not one, but two good-looking gentlemen by the persons of Georgia Bellarmino, our area director in uh, Gawad Kalinga in Boston, and Jeff Siegel, a fitness coach who will be having a special event this Saturday to benefit hungry children in the Philippines, right? So we'll talk more about that in a minute, but let me start this conversation with Georgia right here, who is our area director in uh, Gawad Kalinga, Boston area. Hi, Joe. How are you? Hi. Good evening. Glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get involved with the work of Gawad Kalinga? So um, it started in 2012. Um, I met the previous um, Gawad Kalinga um, uh, directors or uh, group heads here in Boston, Evita and uh, Eugene Florendo. And it started out just them inviting me in to their home. And then... Um, that's how they get you. <laughs> that's how they get you guys. <laughs> and then, yeah, so um, uh, I like food. Uh, I'm a foodie guy. And uh, they had a, a guy come in I didn't know who he was. Um, his name is Claude Tayag. And uh, it turns out he's a, a renowned chef in the Philippines. Yes. And he, he was a good friend of the, of the Florendos. And he was, um, they invited him in over the, the, the Philippines. And then um, he was going to do this event for GK. Um, it's kind of like, uh, like a kwentuhan kind of thing with food. And, you know, it's a fundraising event. I think it was like, you know, $100 per plate or something like that. So, I mean, to me, it was like outrageous. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I didn't used to. <laughs> I, I never like spent 100 bucks for, for, for a plate before. But anyway, I, uh, they wanted, uh, they needed the volunteers. And, and the thing was the uh, at that time, um, so the menu was like sisig. And uh, I, I wanted to know how to cook sisig. And that's how they got me. So I, I volunteered to help them cook sisig. And I don't know if Jeff knows what sisig is. So if you've been if you've been to the Philippines, that's like the number one dish right now in the Philippines. Well, Jeff has but, been to the Philippines a few times, right? Do you know what sisig is, I, Jeff? I have been. I, I uh, feel very, very fortunate that I've had multiple opportunities to travel to the Philippines when I was living um, over in that part of the world, uh, mostly for scuba diving um, and some other adventures. Um, yeah. And I loved all the food. So my, my question for you, Jose, is did, did you ever learn how to cook sisig? <laughs> I did, I did. And this was the special kind of sisig because uh, Claude Taig is from uh, Pampanga where the sisig uh, sta all started. And he, he, he cooks it in this uh, special, special way where he, he um, he grills the pig ears. So Sisig gets pig ears and pig face. Okay, uh, right, yeah. The pork. yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. So you made it with the pig face? We made it, no, actually, uh, we couldn't find pig face over here, but we, we did find say. a lot of pig ears. Um, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if, uh, yeah, so basically that's how we, um, they got me. Uh, so that, that whole uh, event was a, a huge success. It's like, I think we, we raised, um, I, I think like, I, I, I don't know, like um, a, a couple of thousand dollars. Um, and, and so that, I mean, th those kind of things kind of appealed to me. Uh, and then during that event, I just started, they started talking about GK and, you know, who Ton, uh, Tito Tony was, Tony Man, uh, Melotto and, so, um, and then we had, you know, and then Claude was also, um, you know, kind of uh, talking about, you know, Filipino cuisine and, uh, you know, how, um, you know, th that he, he, he himself has some, you know, his personal ad ad advocacies about spreading the Filipino cuisine 
throughout the world. Uh, and so th those went hand in hand to the, like the kind of uh, interests that I, I actually, uh, at that time, uh, you know, interest me a lot. So that's how they got me in GK. So your involvement with GK, with Gawad Kaninga, basically started with food, it seems like, right? It started with food. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we're going uh, to it, talk a little bit more about food yeah, and maybe exactly. oh, the abundance and lack of it in, in just and a few minutes. the lack of it. Right. How, yeah. Tell me a little bit about, you know, where, you know, where, where you grew up in the Philippines, where you're from and everything and what kind of, you know, brought you into this journey of, you know, of helping out and reaching out to people who are, you know, in need. Yeah. yeah. So interestingly enough, so I, I, I grew up in Marikina um, and um, I studied in Ateneo uh, in, the, uh, in Quezon City. And um, the thing I most remember uh, in, in Ateneo is the, their Tulung Dunung program, which is, you know, going to kid, you know, the um, uh, kind of slum area. I don't know if it's really slum. Mm -hmm. uh, at, that, at that time, I thought that was like very poor, like mm -hmm. around, around Marikina, mm -hmm. like in the outskirts of um, Quezon City. Uh, and we would we would go there and teach kids, um, and the, so that that's how I got kind of interested in in this type of work too, like uh, you know build, building communities, going to to these places where you know there's a, um, uh, some level of poverty and helping the kids out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's how that's how I got kind of involved. So. I understand that, that, well, now you're the area director, right, for uh, Boston, for Gawad Kalinga, Boston. And from what I heard, you weren't jumping up and down when you were <laughs> approached and, and asked if you would take on the position. You were actually very reluctant in the beginning. And so I was. tell us a little bit more about that and what convinced you, I guess, or compelled you to take on the role. Yeah, I mean, so I think the reluctance came more about not not <clears throat> being confident enough to, um, you know, host these host these events and 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 I mean, uh, let's let's really uh, let's be honest. I mean, it, the the role this role is mainly about you know uh, raising money, right? Um, it's it's really it uh, it's takes a certain level of experience to be able to like open yourself up, like be vulnerable mm -hmm. to other people and ask for money. Um, you know, um, I mean, it, uh, I, uh, I mean, I, I, I think um, we're lucky because uh, Gawat Kalinga is kind of, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a brand, but it's a well-known um, uh, organization so it it, um, it takes a certain level of clout to be able to uh, go to people and you know speak in on behalf of a, an organization that has uh, given so much already. Uh, but it, it, like being around uh, Evita and G Eugene, how they um, went about you know asking help for the people, I thought that was kind of I, I can't do that. Um, um, so what encouraged but, you to finally said yes, other than did they twist your arm or? <laughs> not real. No, no, no. I think it's more about like uh, being uh, your own, uh, having your own kind of um, methodology, probably. Uh, I think these days they, uh, like, especially now in the pandemic, it needs a certain level of tech savviness to be able to do this job uh, and I, I think I, I, I personally have that in me like that skill set so being able to do like manage this in, in a way like in, through social media or to, through YouTube through what, what we're doing right now um, I think that's where um, the um, this um, this is going. This is this is. It's probably how we're going to be doing a lot of fundraisings nowadays. 
through so join your area uh, are they mostly like younger you're in the you're, well you're in boston right you're close to yeah. the universities and everything sure would you say that most of the people who are supporting gawad kalinga in your area are students or young professionals or are they still a mix of just people from different backgrounds oh we, we we're, we're very diverse here in boston um So um, we have a, a, a very big uh, and active uh, Filipino community. Um, th th those who have been here for, you know, 10, you know, even 20 years. And then uh, there are, um, you know, people, I mean, uh, students from the colleges like Harvard and Boston College that we've been able to um, attract, albeit like only for four years, basically, while they're in, in undergrad, doing their undergrad. But we, we, we've been able to um, attract those uh, kids as well. The, the, these kids are from the Philippines, uh, by the way. And, and then uh, young professionals like me, uh, I, there's, there's all, uh, all this, like, uh, you know, people coming in to the, because Boston is a, a, a tech hub, Mm -hmm. So there's there's always uh, people coming in with the technic tech ba tech background. Technical background. Yeah. So, th th so there, there's a diverse group. Yeah. So well, Gawad Kalinga, you know, as as many of of the people who are watching us here, um, our audience are primarily people who are following our Gawad Kalinga USA Facebook page, and so you know, a lot of them, a lot of you guys are familiar that or know that there are several programs that Gawad Kalinga has right but one of them appealed to you uh, i guess yeah. more than others or you know at least at this time right is is it's what you wanted to support right and this is right. gawad kalinga's kusina ng kalinga or a, right. a kitchen that cares lucy right. translated kitchen. for you Jeff, yes, exactly. in our non filipino non tagalog friends right there right so what is it, what is it about um gawad kalinga's um feeding program kusina ng kalinga appealed to you And can you tell us a little bit more about it for those of us who are not as familiar as you are? Yeah. So um, just kind of what uh, really resounded was that there's like 15 million uh, uh, Filipinos who are um, hungry um, um, and living in that poverty, uh, uh, below the poverty line. And uh, some of these are, uh, I mean, obviously most, um, most of these are kids, mm -hmm. like around, you know, let's say 10 million of these, you know, just living in, uh, you know, um, going, going to bed each day with empty stomachs. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of the, um, what, what attracted me to Cocina ng Kalinga, yeah, Cocina. That to K and K is um, that we we are um, just recognizing that you know there there is a need for nutrition, um, like in order for us to really alleviate par poverty, we we can we have to start with you know we we have to um, keep first of all keep the kids alive. Um, And more than that, like you know, have them the have give them the opportunity to um, grow up um, healthy, um, and 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 you know we we can you know always do the other things like you know building build them houses and all that. But if if these uh, kids are not healthy, um, it, then it's it's really you know we're we're, we're um, We're not really kind of helping them in, in mm -hmm. a way. So I mean, it, but for and for me, I think what what what's important to me, especially that uh, having lived here in Boston and being around a community that was like headed by Jeff, for example, is you know the fitness and nutrition uh, nutrition aspect of it. So that that's uh, that's to me important. Um, you know, health and nutrition, being, having a, a healthy lifestyle. So um, I think that, that that's what kind of, you know, um, attracted me to Cucina. So just bringing that, yeah. 
Right. Speaking of that, so we're going yeah. to talk to Jeff here in a minute, but it's so interesting to me, like I said, how you started, how you started with the work of Gawad Kalinga was through this benefit dinner, right? It revolved right. around food. And then now you're advancing one of the core programs of Gawad Kalinga, which is feeding the hungry, right? With Kusina right. and Kalinga. And it still involves food and nutrition, right? And then now you introduced us to your, you introduced the work to your friend right here. Uh, Mr. Jeff Siegel, who is going to have a special event this coming Saturday, again, also to benefit uh, Gawad Kalinga's, um, you know, nutrition feeding program, which is Kusina and Kalinga. So um, would, you, uh, would you like to uh, tell us how you got uh, Jeff involved in this? So Jeff is uh, an awesome guy. <laughs> I'm sure uh, he is. <laughs> do this thing for us. Thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, so I've known Jeff for about seven years now. It all started when, um, as a very unfit, uh, I don't know what my weight was back then, 180, 85 pound uh, guy signed up. My wife signed me up for this uh, Spartan race, it's called the Spartan race, where you have to go um, uh, run 14 miles and um, uh, do obstacles and all. And I was going to do this race without any <laughs> from the couch. Uh, and uh, I basically, I sought the help of Jeff to get me in shape. And it, uh, I did not not only got, you know, the uh, butt kicking. It, can I say butt? <laughs> you answer. just did. <laughs> I'm pretty I sure it's okay. <laughs> that I got from Jeff, but he also motivated me and made me believe in myself, uh, you know, to do all sorts of things uh, like, um, like, what have we been doing, Jeff? <laughs> like so, so many crazy things, like uh, like Tarzan swings. And... So what what got uh, Jeff interested in doing? You know what he does, but now for the benefits, or you yeah. know what? Maybe this is a question for Jeff. What did? Yeah. Let's uh, think. Uh, thanks, Joe. Let me. Let's hear yeah. from from Jeff this time. What is it, Jeff, that um, got you interested in the work of Gawin Kalina? To mm -hmm. do what you do, right, as a fitness coach, but you know to raise funds and you know and uh, to benefit the work of Gawad Kalinga, specifically its feeding program. Right. Yeah. And just to bring things back to earlier <laughs> in the conversation, I um I didn't cook seasick tonight, but I did cook crispy pork for dinner. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> oh, we can have crispy pork. You know, Close enough. <laughs> in, in spices and herbs, but the the one ingredient that I find really elevates it is fish sauce and and i love fish sauce but I, that's very filipino it's, it's called an under, it's an underloved ingredient especially probably among white people like myself raised in the u.s um so and you know and and we've talked about you know joe was talking about food um i love food too i i love cooking and um and i wish other people would would love cooking as much as i do and you know and um uh yes you know i'm a fitness coach but I, Above that, you know, I, I consider myself a, a health and a wellness coach. And as we were talking about, you know, health um, doesn't exist in a vacuum. You know, health health is so many different factors coming together. You know, um, you know, we talked about personal factors of how you're taking care of your body, and you know, obviously, food is tremendously important to that. And then social factors um, play play a huge role. And and food for me is is really the nexus, right? Food is 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 political it's environmental it's personal it's cultural right like i mean on one level like we we come together around food um and when there's a lot of it we celebrate and it's a great chance to connect with others and build uh you know relationships and um and it's just it it saddens me to to know that there are still so many people out there that don't have sufficient food you know, and, and especially because, you know, we live, or, you know, so many of us in the U.S. where there is perhaps an overabundance of food um, in certain places. And then in other places in the U.S. that there isn't, there's food deserts where, you know, I think both the, the access to food is limited um, and the accessibility in terms of cost is, is also a huge issue. So, 
getting people both healthy and nutritious food at a cost that they can afford um, is something that I feel really deeply about. And, and this was rooted in my own personal struggles with an eating disorder when I was a teenager. Um, and my, my health got to the point where I had to be taken out of school and put in the hospital for a number of months um, because I was severely malnourished and I wasn't eating. And, um, and you know, this journey and personal struggle, you know, where I had to really go deep inside and figure out, you know, what was going on in me and how I could, you know, kind of bring myself back to a place of balance and health um, is informed all the work that I do now in terms of helping build healthy and happy individuals and, and helping build healthy and happy communities. So uh, Jeff is not only a teacher of fitness and nutrition, right? You actually teach also at universities such as Harvard and Top, right? How do you, how do you, you know, mix that? I mean, I guess it's both teaching, right? How is it, I guess, how is the classroom setting mm -hmm. different from the gym setting, right? Or is the teaching a little bit more different? <laughs> how does that, how is that? I've, I've tried to find ways to make them more similar than different, but of course they're different. And in this day and age where so much is on Zoom, it's, it's also different. Um, but you know, my, my background started in, in teaching, in, in education. I was a classroom teacher. I lived in Hong Kong for four years where I was teaching English. Uh, and I moved back to the States to do, to do a master's um, at the Graduate School of Education at, at Harvard. Um, and so I, I consider myself an educator. And, um, and I'm, I'm so glad that I still do get to work in an academic setting. And, and I still teach at, at Harvard and at Tufts. Um, and, you know, I think the, the big thing for me is the importance of bringing our bodies into whatever we're doing, because so much of our education, right, is from the neck on up. And it's just about ideas and facts, and, and it becomes very disembodied. So there's a big movement in the education world towards kind of bringing the body back in, bringing both the emotions and the social part back in. Um, and I find this is really essential. And so whether I'm teaching movements and fitness, or whether I'm teaching uh, meditation and mindfulness, or whether I'm, te you know, I'm teaching something about, uh, you know, social justice or, or well-being or nutrition. Uh, obviously, like again, the body is is right in front and center through all of that. You mentioned you um, you uh, lived in Hong Kong, and I suppose that explains the frequent visits in the Philippines back then, because it's like an hour and a half, two hour plane ride, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, and actually before I lived in Hong Kong, I lived in Penang in Malaysia, so I was even a little bit closer, um, and so yeah, I, I loved getting to travel there, um, you know, and just explore. So what places have you visited in the Philippines? Uh, so again, I've, you know, I've gone all over mostly for diving um, down in like Pong Lao. I mean, probably one of the most beautiful memories I have is being in, in Coron. There are some wonderful in Palawan, right? scuba diving. And then I took a boat from Coron uh, down to El Nido in Palawan. And I was just blown away by how beautiful the islands were, the beach were, and, and the people and how friendly and gracious um, I actually remember a story where we, we arrived and we, I was with a friend and we didn't have a place to stay and we thought we could just sort of wander in and, and all the other guest houses and hostels and things were, were full. And so we kept walking and walking through this town until we kind of, we got to this one uh, home that was like sort of, sort of a guest house, but not really one sure. We knocked on the door and the lady let us come in and, and literally just sleep uh, kind of on her couch downstairs and was just, it was just the, the most generous thing um, to have a stranger come in and, and I just, uh, I'll never forget that. So um, yeah, I, I have a, a, a deep, uh, just, yeah, love of the Philippines and I can't wait to get to go back sometime. Well, that's awesome. I mean, so it, it looks like this will not, your work, your, what you're going to be doing this Saturday and your involvement in the work of Gawad Kalinga isn't really the first time for you to be involved in, you know, in, uh, with the Filipino culture and, you know, and doing something for, for the Philippines. So I thank you on behalf of not only the Gawad Kalinga advocates, but also on behalf of fellow Filipinos for contributing your time and and talents um, in doing this event that's going on this Saturday. On that note, let us share what this is all about. Just give yeah. me one second here and wanna make sure that we've got it on. 
Yes. So Please. this is, can you guys see my screen? Um, yep. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, Wellness for a Cause that is happening this uh, Saturday, September 26th at 9 a.m. Pacific. All right, it says right here, proceeds from this event will benefit Cusina ng Kalinga, the anti-hunger movement for children uh, of Gawad Kalinga. Registration is $25 and students is $15. And, you know, and there's a link right there. If you guys, uh, those of us, who, uh, those of you are watching, please visit the uh, Gawad Kalinga Facebook page. And there's a link right there that will take you to the, the Zoom link on how to register for this event. Um, I also want uh, to invite Jeff to, for those people who want to, you know, check out your, your what you do and maybe, you know, en enroll in your classes and everything. Um, can you give us some information about, uh, you know, where, where people can find you? Mm -hmm. uh, first, I want to say, please come on Saturday. Um, and if you can't come, you know, you can still donate, but uh, we're going to have an hour of, of movement, and it's, it's going to be a little bit of everything, really accessible. Uh, you know, I'm all about making fitness approachable. Like, it doesn't have to be suffering. Um, you know, it, it can be fun. It can be playful. I think play is a really essential element that we've lost so much of, uh, not only in the fitness world, but in kind of general. Um, so I really encourage you to just show up. Uh, all you need is, is, is a willingness and a, and a water bottle, and I, I think you'll have a good time. And before, do you do this on a regular basis? It's, this is not a one-time event for Gawad Kalinga, right? Do you do virtual classes? Yeah, so I, I, I do do some virtual fitness coaching. Um, I have a, a few classes, and you can check out the schedule on my website. I do everything from uh, kind of more full body, like we'll be doing on, on Saturday. Um, I do group coaching classes about action and accountability and goal setting and mindset and just trying to help you achieve all your goals. Um, and I also lead uh, meditations um, and uh, other kind of drop-in mindfulness things that you can participate in. Um, and so all of that is available on my website, Jeff Siegel Wellness. Uh, I also, I'm an avid writer. I love writing. It just helps me make sense of the world. Um, so if you visit my blog, I, I have tons of articles um, talking about everything um, from, from performance to nutrition to mindfulness. Um, and and I, I think, you know, hope, you know, I put it out in the world because I hope it will be helpful. I hope it will be of benefit. And that's really, you know, I'm, I'm here because I, I want to be of service. Um, and I know that, you know, Gawa Kalina is, is, has that mission of being of service um, and trying to help people, especially people who are, you know, underserved and disadvantaged. And, um, you know, as, as somebody who has a certain amount of privilege and resources, I feel like it is my responsibility to give back um, as much as I can. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. I think what you do is very important, right, for uh, uh, being fit, you know, and uh, having proper nutrition. So many people need that, obviously, right? And um, I mean, I think that's really important and it becomes even more meaningful, you know, for us, right, for the people in my country, in our country, Phil uh, the Philippines, that you're able to do what you do and, you know, help the less privileged or less uh, fortunate um, children um, in the Philippines, right, to get proper nutrition. It's so, you know, it's just, uh, it really ties in into what you do, right? So, well, thank you so much for joining me this evening, Jojo and, uh, and Jeff. And again, we invite everybody to, um, to join us on Saturday. Join Jeff Siegel on Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific for Wellness for a Cause. And to register, please uh, visit our Gawad Kalinga USA Facebook page. And there's a link right there on how to register for the event. Again, this has been Donna Reyes. See you next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific for another Quentong GK. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Thank Jeff. You, Donna. Thank I you, Jeff. Will, uh, I'll see you all on, on Saturday. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening. Take care.